Director uh, Wes Pye was gone for a few weeks because his uh, wife was very busy uh, giving birth to their first child. That's right. Whitney, uh, new daddy, and it's very proud of her. Glad to have him back. He does a sensational job out here on the ladies' tour. Carol Norman leads by 10. You know, also along with that, Leila Wagner had her baby. Um, Alex Michael Fishbach, 8 pounds, 7 ounces, 21 inches long. So we so, wish them well. Right. It's two boys now in the Fishbach family. <laughs> Up the track. Will it hold pocket? No chance. 3 6 10 are the leftovers on the right hand lane. And Wes's daughter's name was Brittany Alyssa. Brittany Very pretty. Alyssa. Mm -hmm. So she does something wrong, right? <laughs> He'll find all that out, right? He's got a lot to look forward to. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that ball better hook a little bit. And so Carol Norman, who normally is a very reliable spare shooter, opens up the door for Sue Nighting. Through that right around the eighth board, playing off of her strike target, the ball just slid. Missed it by not more than a hair. Instead of being ahead, now she trails in this match. It has been back and forth since the second frame. 216 to 214 was the score of the opening match as Carol Norman defeated Tish Johnson. Neither player really in this game able to put much together. Solid shot there, but she leaves the 10. Two bad breaks in a row on the left lane for Carol. Solid seven and a solid 10. Has to put that last shot out of her mind and get back to business. It's been my experience through the years that when players miss spares in the championship round, it normally costs them somewhere down the line. We'll wait and see if that happens to Carol Norman. It's so tough to make up. Well, it's like missing a two-foot putt. You just can't afford to do it if you're going to play at that level. No, you can't. Nice roll. And no 7-9 this time, Sue Nighting says. And that's a key double, and she leads by 14. She made sure she got a good lift on that ball. Ball driving through a lot harder than the last shot we saw. Solid shot there. One more strike, and she leads by 24. And Carol Norman will have an uphill battle to wage. Sue has really worked hard on going more direct, closing up her shoulders, and not crossing so many boards. And she said the key to it was moving her feet. Uh, she put her left foot forward when she wanted to angle it up and put her left foot back when she wanted to go left. A couple of beautiful shots there, pressure shots, and now Sue Nighting has seized the momentum here of game number two. Let's see if Carol Norman can respond now with a couple of strikes of her own. She trails by 24. She needs to strike now. See Carol's last title, the Santa Maria Classic, just coming two weeks ago. And she opts to use her initial re-rack here on the right-hand lane. I had a chance to stand down there and take a look at both racks prior to the telecast, and uh, I thought they were both excellent. Yeah, it's very difficult to see. The two-pin might have been a little bit back, which could cause her to leave a four-pin or a four-nine. It looks pretty solid. Let's see what she does with it. Out of Ardmore, Oklahoma. 11th year on the national tour with five career titles. Finds herself in a desperate situation. Ooh, key shot there. And that was more like the carry that Carol had all week. Actually hitting about halfway into the pocket and just blew the pins out. So 201, the best for Carol Norman if she throws four more in a row. And meanwhile, Sue Nighting has room for 225. Pretty amazing when you consider that she already has two donuts to go along with the rest of the strikes. That's how it was this week, though. Uh, a lot of strikes, but unfortunately some splits crept up in there. Well, a lot of speed on that shot as the 2-4-5 remains on lane 35. 
venture to say if we had the clock on that one, that was the hardest shot that she's thrown all night. You're right. She really, really revved up on that one. I think just trying to probably hit the ball hard to get a little bit extra on it to make sure she carried. She's put herself in the position now where fourth place is looking like where she's going to finish this week. Good conversion of the 2-4-5, but it's not going to be enough unless Sue Knighting really makes a major league mistake here in the ninth or the tenth. She'd probably have to have two opens, I think. Well, the way she threw the last two shots, I wouldn't suspect that that would happen. Ooh, looked for the wall shot, nearly ended up with it, but 10-pin uh, remains on lane 36. Got that ball out. It actually looked like she drifted left a little bit with her feet on that, set the ball down left to where she had been. Still came back hard, though. Hit very light. Could have carried. And she just glanced over at the scoreboard provided by West Pie, and so she knows very much at this point in time what she needs to advance into the semifinal game. The smallest of our top five players looks like she's going to advance. And that time electing to stay with her strike ball because she was going across at the 10 pin, wanting it to hook across. So she did not change surfaces. In a comfortable position there because Carol Norman, the best that she could shoot would be 181. So nine pins or more and Sue Nidig will advance. Good, strong shot, and a couple of good pocket hits. Didn't carry, but for Carol Norman, it'll be a fourth-place finish. They were the shots she needed to make, though, under the circumstances. Just needed to make a clean shot, not get in any trouble. Go out, hit the pocket a couple of times, make your spares. Michelle Mullen will be next in line from Matson, Illinois. And then uh, a very talented left-hander, Dee Dee Davidson. Will bowl the winner of that match for the title. Sue Nighting has now won five consecutive matches in the championship round as Carol Norman will pocket $2,500 for this week's work. And I guess Sue's doing a good job about uh, getting her goals changed here. Got to change on the fly sometimes, as they say. She was just absolutely beside herself, thrilled with that victory three weeks ago. And she liked it so much, apparently she wants to try it again. Sue Nighting with a solid game as she wins game number two and will advance into the semifinal game against Michelle Mullen when we come back to Yuma, Arizona.